there's no better way of putting that there's no nicer way of putting that either in fairness to it it's a van right uh, oh my god I'm a Fianna Fáil right so with this van I have to reverse out of space so I have a reversing camera it's alright I have parking sensors and things because uh, it's a passenger van now it might be called a Citroen Space Tour but it's a van and it means it's got a lot of manoeuvrability in a stairwell now that's where I work by the way Midlands 1 and 3 in case you're wondering just there a huge radio station that's just struggle out of um, so where what why do you need a van let's look let's look logically first of all as to why you would need a passenger van right now you might notice there's a camera on the outside of the, there's a couple of cameras on the outside of the van one of them is very very far away down the back of the car <laughs> space that's why you need a van right this has eight seats so there's two in the front here you can walk between the two between the two here I'm just driving down uh, you can walk between the two seats here without opening the doors then you have a bench seat of three then you have a bench seat of three so there's six back there and two up front now I quite like that I'm, I'm very into the space idea I love buying something that's just a little bit bigger than you might need because buying something that's exactly the right size gives you no reason no maneuverability to expand in any way shape or form you're kind of stuck with that whereas this gives you the ability to be able to upgrade at some point in the future as well now second why, do, why else do I need a van well because it's a van for a start right so that's not beat around a bush if you open the boot of this you've got a van right if you take away the last row of seats you've got a really big van if you take away both sets of seats behind me you're, you're just up into full size van space okay now that might be good for some people I know my neighbour who doesn't live very far away from me he's got a lot of kids right and so he requires a van anyway daily to get the kids around the place but I don't but my kids still like to mess around in the back of the van when we're driving they like to sit in the last row because it feels like the school bus or the bus you know wheels in the bus go round and round now what's the downside why aren't we all driving vans well, first of all, manoeuvrability. The thing is impossible to bully park. It's huge, right? It's huge. You will have to park it in, in, in proper car park spaces. There's no way you're going to get this into parallel parking unless you're a serious white van man driver. Um, two, what, like problems. It's noisy. Vans are a huge, big echo chamber. So when you're driving along at higher speeds, especially up around 120 kilometers an hour mark, you're going to have to shout at the people back there. It's loud in here, and there's no good way of saying that. I'm sorry, Citroen, but it is. Between the, the, the splashy noise of the tires and the, uh, the uh, air current flowing across the side of the van, and the fact that it's flat-sided, it's, it does take a lot of getting used to. As a practical tool, equipment, I get it if I was making money from a car, from a van, like if I was, if I was renting this out as a taxi, then I'd get it. I'd understand, you know, if I was taxiing in this. But I'm not. If I'm just driving around my family, I want something a bit quieter. Um, I've had some gremlins, we'll call them, in the electrical systems in this particular car. Uh, this doesn't seem to like Apple CarPlay. It works and then sometimes it doesn't work. And then other days where it just doesn't bother connecting up to Bluetooth. It won't play what I wanted to play from the source just flicks back to radio the whole time which is not wrong with radio but sometimes you don't want to listen to it I want to listen to something else it tells me here on a dashboard that my right front door is constantly open that just started yesterday uh, I've tried everything I've looked at the lock I've looked at the lock and mechanism I've looked to make sure it's not jamming inside the lock that it's not the sensor detector is not jammed in some way to, to suggest that the door is actually locked um, the door locks okay and everything seems to be all right but still I don't know whether it's working or not um, like all of these little bits and pieces add up to an annoyance and realistically I love the exterior I think it looks brilliant and engine wise exceptional really good relatively economical plenty of torque and power although you will find yourself in fifth gear when you're only doing 60 70 kilometers an hour because 
the gear ratios are a little bit weird in it, but it seems okay when you get up around the sixth gear, it seems all right. Um, like all of that makes sense, the looks, the torque, the, the pulling power, the engine, you know, all this stuff all makes sense, but can I really say this is this is better than a Caravelle or, you know, which is one of my favorite van, passenger vans to buy at the moment, it would be Caravelle without a doubt, but that's really, like that's top, that's top. Renault traffic? Mm. I can't really say this is better than a Renault Traffic. Or a Peugeot, is it called a Blipper? I think that's the name of it. This is more utilitarian somehow. I like it because in a van, I am at my most comfortable. When I'm sitting here, I'm above the pedals, so my knees are at a right angle to the floor, which is really comfortable because you're pressing down on the accelerator rather than forward on the accelerator. And I'm above the steering wheel, so I'm sitting quite high in the car, looking out the front window. And so it does make a big difference, you know, as you're driving along. You think, God, this is really pleasant to sit in here. Uh, you know, in a van, you would drive from here to Timbuktu and not get tired. Whereas you would just wouldn't do it in the car, you just get tired after a bit in the car. So I like it because it's a van. I can't really say I like it because it's a Citroen Space Tour. It's massive. Um, it seems to be pretty good value for money, looking at the price list, in among all the rest of the vans, seems to be okay. Uh, plenty of torque, plenty of power, plenty of scope for abilities. So let's look at the downside. Downside, it's loud. Uh, I'm, my voice is actually raising this morning, even though I'm just trundling along here at 70 odd kilometers an hour. Um, it's hard to park it. There's absolutely no way of putting shopping in the boot. The floor is hard plastic, and so everything just slides around. And so your little jar of honey is just burst and all over the back seat somewhere, right? If I need the space, it's definitely on the shopping list. But I'd rather, like, I'm not looking to run a taxi, so I'd rather sacrifice a seat or two and go, you know, for something a little bit more luxurious instead of that entirely bus taxi feel that's in this one. Anyway, thank you very much for coming along and looking at this review of the Citroen Space Tour. If you like it, I hope you give me a like and a subscribe, and maybe you'll even share the video with your friends. But I mean, look. But until the next time, I will see you on the far side. Bob Flavin. Testing cars. So you don't have to.